Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a motor differential protection scheme using the SEL710 protective relay. So the SEL710 is one of the most popular motor protection relays, at least here in the United States, and it's capable of implementing two motor differential protection functions by using dedicated CT inputs. Now I've talked about transformer and substation bus differential protection in a lot of detail in previous videos. I'll leave a link to those videos in the description below. But basically a differential function is a protective function that takes a look at the current entering and the current leaving a differential zone and declaring a trip if there's a discrepancy between these two currents. Now this differential zone can encompass different parts of the power system such as a transformer, a substation bus, a generator, or an induction motor like we'll see in this video. Now in a differential protection scheme, the relay is going to declare a trip if there's a discrepancy between the current entering and the current leaving the differential zone. And that's of course because if there's a fault inside of the differential zone, then these two currents are not going to be equal to each other. Now if there's no fault in the differential zone, these currents are going to cancel out because they're going to have the same magnitude but opposite polarity. Now in the SEL710, the differential element is implemented a little bit different than in the 47E for transformer protection or the 47B for bus protection. In the SEL710, this element is actually more of an overcurrent element that is reading the current off of differential CTs. In other words, the differential measurement is being done externally with the CTs and then this current is being fed to the relay to its differential inputs. The relay then takes this measurement and compares it to the pickup level of the differential element and declares a trip if it exceeds that value. Now before we go deeper into how to set up the motor differential scheme using the SEL710 relay, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We always post videos here about power engineering and power system protection and control. And if you want to learn more about power system protection and control, make sure to check out our online courses where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. You can check out those online courses using the link in the description below. All right, so let's take a look at how we can set up the motor differential protection using the SEL710 relay. Now, in order to implement the current differential scheme in the SEL710 relay, we have to make sure that it includes the dedicated CT inputs for the differential element that I mentioned before. So if we go over here in the instruction manual to page 75, the terminals are the ones that I have over here on the screen, terminals EO5 through EO8. So these ones over here. Here, and we can also see them over here. So these are dedicated CT inputs just for the differential function. Now we also have over here terminals Z01 through Z08, which are the current inputs used for other functions that involve current as well. Now these are your typical CT inputs. Again, the point that I'm trying to make here is that the SEL710 relay has these dedicated differential current inputs, E05 through E08, and all other protection elements using current operate off of the Z01 through Z08 terminals, at least for the power number that I have over here on the screen. So again, there's two separate CT inputs, E05 through E08 are dedicated for the differential function, and then the other current functions use Z01 through Z08. Now let's take a look at how we can wire the CTs, which then feed the differential current into these terminals E05 through E08. And so to see that, we can go to page 86 of the instruction manual. And we have over here just a few examples on how we can set the differential function, or rather how we can wire the CTs into the relay to implement a differential function. So one way that we can do this is by using what's called a core balance CT or also called a flux summation CT. And in this configuration, the conductors for each phase are passed through a CT so that the net current for normal unfaulted conditions is zero and the net current for faulted conditions is equal to the fault current. So in other words, you can see over here on the image on the screen that because the CTs for each phase is reading both the currents entering and leaving the motor. So for example, if we take a look at the A phase over here, you can see that we have both wires both going into the motor. So this wire over here and also leaving and going to the neutral point. So this portion over here. So both wires are passed through the CT. And so the net reading will be zero if they are equal in magnitude and have opposite polarity as they would for normal operating conditions, in other words, non-faulted conditions, and it would be equal to the fault current if there's a fault in the motor. And again, this is done on a per phase basis. So we need three separate CTs and the secondaries of those CTs are then fed to the relay so that the relay reads the net current on each phase at terminals E05 through E07 and then E08 is just a return. Now we could also implement this differential function using two sets of three phase CTs that are summed in wiring and then brought to the relay terminals. And we can see that over here on page 87. So if we scroll down a little bit, we have 
two three line drawings over here that shows the connections for the CTs and the relay terminals. So the operation for this type of configuration is similar, but instead of summing the currents at the CT, the currents are summed in the wiring. So say for example that we have, let's say 100 to five CTs, and I'm gonna use this figure on the left side. So again, let's say just to go through an example that we have CTs that are 100 to five. So they have a 100 to five ratio, and that's for both CTs. And then let's say that the motor draws 100 amps. So the current reading for each phase is gonna be 100 amps. And this is all in primary terms. Now in this case, because we have 100 to five CTs, we would have five amps secondary flowing through each one of the CT secondary leads. So on this side, on the left side, current goes into the polarity of the CT. So it goes out of the polarity of the CT. So the current has this direction. And on the other side for A phase as well, current leaves the polarity of the CT, which means that it has to enter the polarity of the CT. So this current flowing this way is also five amps. And so if you notice at this point over here, we're going to have five amps coming this way and we're gonna have five amps leaving and going this way. So that what's fed into the relay this way is of course zero amps. So basically at this point over here, the currents for a non-faulted condition because the magnitudes are the same and the angles are opposite are gonna cancel out at that point such that the relay is then gonna read zero amps. So again, similar to the core balance or flux summation CT, for that one, what we're doing is we're feeding both wires for the connections of the motor into the CT so that the CT itself reads the net current flowing into the motor. Whereas here we're summoning the currents entering and leaving the motor in the wiring and then we're feeding the result of that to the relay. So if there's a non-faulted condition, like in this case where current comes from one side and leaves out the other side, then what's fed to the relay would be zero amps. But if there's a fault inside of the motor, then both currents are gonna sum up and then that's what the relay is going to read. All right, so now that we know how these schemes operate from a wiring point of view, let's take a look at how the differential element operates. And so we can find that over here on the instruction manual on page 172. And just remember that these instruction manuals are often updated, so the page numbers might change. This is just for the most current version, but if you look at this one year from now, the page numbers might change, but typically the content of the instruction manual doesn't change that much but the figure numbers might change, the page numbers might change. Just note that what I'm showing you here might be on a different page in a future version of the instruction manual. All right, so the differential element is over here and what I wanna show you is basically how this element operates. And again, in this scheme, since we are taking care of the differential current external to the relay, the differential protection element within the relay is really just a simple definite time over current element. That is, we read the current in the differential ZT inputs and then compare that to a predetermined threshold and trip after some time. So in this case, the pickup of our elements, and in here we have two elements, the pickups are 87M1P, so this setting over here, and 87M2P for the level two element. Now the relay then compares the current reading from the highest of the differential current from any one of the three phases to this value using this comparator over here and over here, and starts timing if it is higher. So again, 87M1P and 87M2P are our settings. We then have the readings of the differential currents over here and over here. And so we're comparing that reading to our setting. And if that's higher, then this timer starts timing. Now we also have these settings over here, 87M1TC and 87M2TC which are the torque controls for the differential elements. So in other words, the calculations are blocked unless these conditions are a logical one. So for example, something that we could do here is to set up the level one element to be active during the starting of the motor when large inrush currents are expected, and then level two, for example, to be active the rest of the time. And we would do this so that we can use a less sensitive pickup for level one, since during starting when the motor draws large currents to break the inertia, it is more likely for us to have false differential current and then use a more sensitive pickup when the motor is running at its normal current level. Now for either one of these elements, we need to implement a short delay, which is this setting over here, 87M1TD and 87M2TD, and that's used to ride through any transients. A typical setting for that is 0.1 seconds. So 0.1 seconds. All right, so now let's jump into the settings file itself and see how we can program the relay to implement a differential function. 
All right, so what I have over here are just default settings for an SCL 710-5 relay. And for this example, I'm gonna assume that we're gonna have two sets of CTs. Each one has a 100 to five ratio and they're wired in a differential configuration. So the second figure that we looked at previously, not the core balance CT or the fluxomation CT, but the second one where the currents are added in the wiring. And we have two CTs, one on the incoming side of the motor and one on the neutral side of the motor. Now for this case, we're also going to assume that one of those CTs is wired into the phase current inputs and we'll assume that we have a motor with a full load amps of 100 amps. So let me actually go back to the instruction manual and show you just so that that's a little bit clearer. I believe that was on page 87 and it's this one over here. So basically I'm saying we're gonna have this configuration and our ratios are gonna be 100 to five for both sides. And then you can notice over here that this CT over here is also fed into terminals Z01 through Z05 for the A, B, and C currents. And then of course they sum up over here, here, and here, and then we feed that into the differential CT inputs. And again, we said that this motor, the full load amps, which is normally abbreviated FLA, is 100 amps. So now if we go back to the settings file, again, in here, I've started from default settings. And this is a relay that has the differential current inputs, of course, in its part number. So we're gonna focus only on the motor differential elements and we're gonna assume that we're gonna trip using output 301. All right, so again, we know that our ratios are 100 to five, so that's gonna be 20 to one, and that we have a motor with a full on amps rating of 100 amps. So in secondary terms, the full load amps would be five amps. Now to set our phase input CT ratio and the full load amps in primary terms, we can go over here to group one, set one, and let me expand this. And then we can go to configuration settings. And this setting, CTR1, is the CT ratio for the phase input. So Z01 through Z05, and again, we saw that that was also 100 to five. So this is, as the relay is telling you over here, CTR1 to one. So if you have a 100 to five CT ratio, that's gonna be 20 to one. So let's click enter. And then the full on amps of the motor is 100. And now to set up the differential elements, we can go over here to motor differential over current settings. And by default, this is disabled. So let's go ahead and enable it. We're gonna say E87M, we're gonna set that to yes. That means we are going to enable the function. And we know that our ratios again are 100 to five for both CTs, and then they're summed up and fed into the relay. So our ratio for our differential function, so CTR 87M, basically the CT ratio for the CTs that are fed into the differential CT inputs, that's also going to be 20. And again, we have a motor with a full load amps of 100 amps, so the full load amps in secondary terms would be five amps. So I mentioned this before that we want to set two elements. Element one is going to be active during starting of the motor, which we can use relay warbit 50S to determine that. And then element two is going to be active the rest of the time. So now a recommended setting for this type of differential scheme where we have the CTs wired into the relay and the differential current is summed up in the wiring. A recommended setting for that is anywhere between 10 and 20% of the full load amps of the motor. So in this case, we're gonna be using our element one to be the one active during starting of the motor. So we're gonna set that at the high end of that range and then element two at the lower end of that range, and element two is gonna be running the rest of the time. So since our full load amps is five amps secondary, then the level one pickup would be, again, 20% of that. So we're gonna set this to one amp. And now notice over here that this is amps secondary, that's important. So now we're gonna do everything in secondary terms. So that's gonna be 20% or one amp, and our level two pickup is gonna be 10%. So 10% of five is gonna be 0.5. And now for both, again, we need to implement a short delay just to write through transients. We're gonna set that to 0.1 seconds for both level one and level two. And then as I mentioned, our element one is gonna be active only during starting of the motor. For that, we can use this relay warbit 50S, which signifies that the relay is in its starting condition. Basically, the relay takes a look at the current level, compares that to the full load amps, and if it's fairly high, then it knows that it has to be starting. That's why it's drawing so much current to break the inertia when the motor is starting. And then when it's not starting, therefore it's running at its normal condition. So that's gonna be not 50S. So we're gonna enable level one with a relay warbit 50S, that's gonna run during starting of the motor, and we're gonna enable level two 
when the motor is not starting. So all the rest of the time. Now we've programmed our differential function. And again, if we take a look at the instruction manual on page, I believe 187 or actually page 172, the output of these functions are these relay word bits over here, 87 M1T and 87 M2T. Those are the trip word bits for this differential functions. 87 M1T of course is for level one and 87 M2T of course is for level two. So if we go back to our settings file, the last thing that we need to do here now that we've programmed our CT ratios and the differential function is to program the output of that internal logic into the trip equation and then into the output that is eventually going to trip the motor breaker. So first we're gonna to go to the trip equation that's down over here in trip logic settings. Let's expand that and go to trip and close logic. There's a bunch of functions here by default. Of course, you would implement elements like thermal overload, current on balance, instantaneous phase and ground elements, basically different protection functions. For this example, we're only focusing on the differential function. So I'm gonna wipe all this out and I'm gonna say this equation, TR, which is the trip equation, is simply gonna be equal to 87 M1T. So that's the level one differential element or 87 M2T which again is a level two differential element. And then after that, we can go to the output that we're gonna use as our trip output to trip the motor breaker. So that's gonna be here under logic one, slot C output contacts. And again, I said that for this example, we're gonna use output 301, but of course in real life, you would have to take a look at the DC schematic for your relay and see which output exactly is tripping the motor breaker. In this case, just as an example, out 301 is the one that we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna program this to say trip. So basically what we did over here again is we programmed the CT ratios under configuration settings, the full load amps of the motor, then we programmed the differential elements. We have two elements, level one and level two. Level one is running during starting, level two is running the rest of the time. We know that the output of that internal logic is gonna be relay word bits 87M1T and 87M2T. We programmed those into the trip equation over here, just so that we can feed that through the internal trip logic, which among other things includes a minimum trip duration. And the output of that is gonna be the relay word bit trip, T-R-I-P. And then we said that our trip output for this example is output 301. So we programmed trip into that output. And then of course in wiring, you would have the contact go to the trip coil of the breaker, which is going to trip the breaker when the relay detects a differential condition or rather it detects a fault by using the differential function. All right, so that's how you set up a motor differential protection scheme using the SEL 710 relay. Now, if you wanna learn more about power system protection and control, make sure to check out our online courses where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. So make sure to check out those courses using the link in the description below. And as always, make sure to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power engineering and power system protection and control. And we'll see you in the next one.